I. Oh my God, the tables have turned. I know. Are you nervous? You should be. Have you ever wondered, am I the asshole? Welcome to Who's the Asshole, a grinder podcast where we're not just talking, we're getting into it. I'm your host, Katya, and I'm here to probe deep into your juiciest, messiest stories. So bend over, ladies, because I want to see the receipts. Who's the asshole? Hello, hello. Welcome to Who's the Asshole. I'm your host and resident asshole expert, Katya Zamolochkova. Today's guest is a writer, pop culture commentator, and fashionista, as evidenced by this beautiful sweater from Henry Zenka. Zenkov. Zenkov. Love Henry Zenkov. You may have seen him on Twitter conversing with your favorite celebrities or perhaps interviewing your favorite pop culture icons on his own podcast, Shut Up, Evan. His work has been published in outlets such as British Vogue, New York Magazine, GQ, and more. Please give a big Polish welcome to Evan Ross Katz. That, the, 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 the one, two, three punch of that name, that name screams Pulitzer. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, impending. Yeah. So let's get right into uh, celebrities and assholes. Okay. Who do you think, out of all the celebrities that you've interviewed, has the most beautiful asshole? Oh. And beautiful being like clarity of tone, uh, sort of like a perfect pucker, uh-huh. <laughs> and uh, like a effervescent, otherworldly sparkle. You know, when you ask the question, who comes to mind immediately is James Marsden. Oh. Just a feeling. Yeah. Pristine asshole energy. Who else? Women. Um, pristine assholes. Well, I mean, I'd be remiss not to say Nicole Kidman. I, yes. I would counter that with Jessica Chastain. Mm. Makes sense. Also, spiritual sisters. Spiritual sisters. Also, curveball. Melissa McCarthy. Absolutely. You cannot I said a for her. <laughs> you cannot. Well, because of the whole scene in Bridesmaids. Mm. Oh, I see. Yeah, it, yeah. Does, it leaves a bad taste in the mouth. Yeah. Um, I actually saw her on a plane once, and she was so delightful. End of that story. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, so, it's, like gonna, it's like I want her to be an asshole. Like delightful people are great. They're so boring, though. Yeah. Give me some drama. I think my. In this is, is a non-sexual thing, but the thing I enjoy most on this earthly plane is finding out that an A-lister is like behind the scenes the most vile, cretinous, despicable yeah. f-ing ghoul that this uh. earth has ever seen. Well, especially when we get glimpses of it, like you know, like when the Christian Bale audio mm-hmm. was released. Oh, yeah. Um, so obviously, like there's some people that are like storied. No. Um, or I think about like that Tom Cruise audio that leaked during COVID. But you know what though? I believe that was a staged moment. Interesting. I really do because if, if we know anything about Mr. Cruise, he is short, calculated, and a master of his own stunts. Mm. I think it was a stunt. Successfully pulled off. But I mean, he's the per- you know he he's famous for walking into a room of like 168 people. Yeah. Like, hi Jeff, hi John, hi Barbara, hi Leslie. You know, he's like one of those. He's got yeah that thing going on. Plus, but it's like oftentimes the mythical asshole turns out to be really sweet and kind, right. which I don't like. I like sort of like stand in your personage. Yeah. So I actually feel like young Hollywood. There's a deficit of assholes. I know. Austin Butler needs to kill somebody with his car. Seriously. You know. <laughs> Like, get into some real drama. Jennifer Lawrence is like, I'm just like a regular girl. It's yeah, like, watch come Housewives. on. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So before we jump in, congratulations on getting hitched. Thank you. Or gay married, as we say. Thank you, thank you. Um, how is married life treating you, and are the rumors true? Did you meet on Grindr? <laughs> uh, what if I was like, married life is just hell? Yeah, it sucks. My husband's a piece of yeah, and every and day I, I plan regret. on killing him. Yes. Yeah. And eating him. And, yes. um, I would say it's it's fantastic so far. It It's not incredibly different. I would say the big difference is like financial stuff. You know what I mean? Have you merged your assets? N- we're like mid-process, but I still have that feeling of like, you know, last night he's like, oh, well, you get the Uber. And I'm like, well, I just got the last Uber. Why don't you? But I'm like, oh, it's all the same, right? It's, but like, I, that's just kind of unlearning. I don't know, Evan. This does not bode well. It sounds you like think? you were sowing the seeds of Doubt. acrimony and it's headed to... D I V O R E C. It might be. You know, I, we do joke sometimes though, because we'll wake up in the morning sometimes and we'll look at each other and we'll be smiling, and then one of us will just be like, "I want a divorce." <laughs> um, that's sort of like you know our morning wake up. Um, but yes, we met on Grinder in 2018. Oh, this is funny. Okay. He messaged me first because he recognized me from YouTube because he had seen my interview with you and Trixie. I am the ultimate wingman. 
If you wear my shirt in P-Town, you are guaranteed to get laid. Go ahead. Good to know. So he was a fan of Trixie. He's a fan of Trixie's. No, we're just kidding. He was a fan of your both. No, he's a fan of both of you. And then he, I, I looked at his stats. Mm. He's 6'4". So basically, I mean, that just, you don't need to know anything else. Yeah, I basically, people, well, like, I like, four, you know, great. yeah, I'm a little, I'm not heightist. I just, I like a gentleman of a certain height. Yeah. Um, and so that intrigued me right away. And then we ended up living several blocks from one another. Mm. So I think it made like the early days very just convenient mm. um, because we could, you know, pop over. And he, I had two cats at the time. Oh, Jesus. He's allergic. So he, and he did not like coming over to my place. So it was great because we had the flexibility to go over to his studio. How long did you wait before you euthanized the cats? I gave them away. Oh my god! After I know, I mean, they're, okay. So like, I hate cats. No, I had I had Bengal tigers, so I think that they're like different. <laughs> um, I gave them away at like two years in That's okay. to loving homes. Yeah, I'm sure. They definitely weren't put in a wood chipper. No, it's fine. No. Um, so as we know, you are cro- you are chronically and inconsolably online. You live on the internet, Evan. What's your take on Gen Z's internet personality and brain uh, brand new language? And I'm going to take this further. Are you aware of Gen Alpha's brain rot vocabulary? Well, I just learned that there was a term, Gen Alpha, last night. Uh-huh. And it's, what, 14 and under? I, I believe it's, like, middle school age. Yeah, that's alarming. It's, like, Gen Z's kind of, like, moving into, you know, elder statesman territory. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. What do I think about Gen Z, like, language? Yeah. I sort of go back and forth sometimes with, like, as a millennial, how I integrate it, because like, is it, there's that line of like try hard versus like in with the culture. It can be that that Steve Buscemi, hello fellow children, you know, yeah. But I think if you lean into that, like that's subversive or transgressive rather. Ah. So it's like, it's always that hard line of like, to be in defiance of something or to own it. But then if you're going to own it, you need to take it a step further to like bring it to a camp level. It's all, everything is levels, right? Like it's all about sort of modulating. Let me give you an example of that. What the Sigma? You, my level 10 Riz Lord edged me uh, all the way to Ohio where I munted my grandma. Baby Gronk? Did you just come up with that? N- uh, no, it, this is like oh, okay. um, brain so, rot lingo. Uh, yeah. R- I can't Does, get into Riz. Riz is, I, I found out, is charisma. Riz, it's like, are you doing me, is this in service of something that was bad? And it's like, charisma, great word. Yeah. It's so strange. I think it comes from playing video games. I'm not really sure. I haven't fully investigated, but... It's just wild. It's like that point in your life where you get to the age, like you said, where, oh, okay, should I go to the nursing home right now or yeah. just like take a long walk on, you know. It's- or get on that final destination flight and just say, call yeah. it. take Calgon, take where, me away. Where we'll go, yeah. yeah. I guess we're going to Ohio to goon with our grandmas. <laughs> um, let's see. Favorite interview you've ever done or say top five because I know you've done so many. Um, well, Coolidge would definitely be up there yeah. because we recorded the interview And then I sent her the interview because she wanted to hear it. And she was like, you can't air this. She was like, I sound terrible. And this was before we really knew each other. Uh This was like how we met. And she was like, you need to can it. But she was like, I'll pay to have it like redone. And like, I'm not going to let you, like, there's nothing to pay for. I was like, okay, but we'll we'll go. So we recorded the interview again. And that's really fun. I love doing like that second take because it's like I knew... I knew her better at that point, and I yeah. knew how what were going to be interesting topics. And one thing about Coolidge, which I think is applicable to a lot of people like her, is instinctually as an interviewer, you want to ask them about Legally Blonde and all this stuff that they've yeah. done. But Coolidge is really uninterested in talking about herself. So if you can ask her about you know, uh, linen wallpaper. Like, that's a subject that you can really go deep on. And I'm someone, like, I love those character quirks in people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that discovery, I think that interview unlocked an interview style that I really tried to take on where it's like, I try to do less, like, tell me about Twisters. Like, what was yeah. it like shooting, you know, in that with the wind and the rain? I don't give a f- what I mean. Like, so, so yeah. yeah, it's all the other stuff. So she, to me, was like a defining interview moment for me. And then also I feel like whatever success I've had, I really credit her with being like a significant turning point. And our interview... Was famously panned by all the critics. Uh, in no. 2017. Uh-huh. I think you also, that was a huge... I don't even know if you remember this, but when you came into Mike.com... I do remember this. I was wearing that lace teddy that you loved with my mm-hmm. my two inch mule mother of pearl toe buckle, and I had the blue hair. Yeah, no, yeah, I do remember. And that we was did this fun. interview, but I think that was one of the first on camera interviews I did. Mm-hmm. 
And that, I think, was also a turning point. If you ever get a chance, I'll send it to you. You should go back and watch that interview. Is, would, it, would I be horrified? Uh, no, I think you'd be amused. Were there many um, incom- like uh, unintelligible tangents that weren't? No. no. Oh, okay. I mean, I, I'm so narcissistic. I love being interviewed. Yeah, I get um, it. I just don't like when people say, so where does your drag name come from? Yeah. They'd be like, oh, well. Whatever, who cares? Um, I find um, with famous people, one of my favorite things to talk about is like travel, right? They travel a lot for work. They know a lot. And I'm really fascinated by just that culture of like always sort of being nomadic. And there's a lot to explore in that. How to get blood out of um, linen sheets. What's the appropriate tip when you over the walls? Yes. Um, How many bellhops have you had sex with? And Uh did you feel bad after? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, funny enough, I was, my first job was, um, at a hotel restaurant, and I would bring uh, room service trays up to to rooms. And at the ripe age of 16, I believe, uh-huh. I fantasized every time that a hot man with a bathrobe that was open would answer the door with a huge And just be ready. Yeah. Ask me if it ever happened. Did it ever happen? No. It's never too late, though. You could cosplay. A cosplay is what? You uh, would be the bellhop. I should just go to hotels with food. Yeah. And then just deliver it. Yeah, no one's like, gonna say no. Yeah, I'd be like, this is Karen from Hospitality. We have a welcome gift for you. Yeah. And um now open your robe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Could you <laughs> yeah. have you ever had sex with a bellhop? Not on duty. Not on duty. Yeah. What about a chauffeur? No, have you? I really, really, the way that I wanted to give oral sex to the Russian Uber driver who drove me home the other day uh-huh. is, it is a, it's a level, level 10 riz. Oh, wow. Like I, I, I was like this close to saying, um, I'm so sorry, this could be very inappropriate, but I, do you need a yeah. by chance? Yeah. Cause I would love to do that to mm. you. But I think him being Russian, he could have murdered me. So could have, but only one, one way to find out, really. Yeah. Um, I'm not like CarPlay is not um, doesn't make my receptors go off. Too dangerous. No, it's not even that. It's just sort of like, you know, you have the things you like. You have you, then it's just like that doesn't. I'm not like ooh. You yeah. Know? Some people like lobster. Other people like in cars. Yeah. What are the three unforgivable activities that a person in a hotel can do? Like guests or the hotel staff? Yeah, guests. I would say a lot of the things that annoy me are things that I, like, they're not things that people are doing wrong. Mm-hmm. So, for instance, I don't love a packed elevator, but it's not anyone's fault. Everyone needs no, to get it. No, it is. It's the architect's fault. Well, there you go. Yeah. Not enough elevators. Yeah. So that's a big thing for me. I get frustrated with the key card situation. Oh, you're speaking my language now, I feel baby. like just as back in the day we used to have smoking floors and non-smoking floors, same thing needs to be instituted. Honey, I went to the Palazzo Avino in Ravello, Italy, most expensive hotel stay of my life. But you know, you know what made it all worth it? A giant f- gold, like heavy oh. key on a on a like a monk's chain. It was like, it was a giant yeah. like a two hander, and people are like, oh, but you lose it. It's like you ain't losing that giant brick. No. You, like you you'll know where that thing before you can locate your own like genitals. You know, it's like it was so satisfying to do that whole like oh. Because with the key cards, they get demagnetized all the time. Mm-hmm. What happens, and let me paint you this picture. I have a gentleman caller arriving to my hotel. And he cannot just come up to my room. He has to, I have to tiptoe down in my negligee. Yep. In my little set, my marabou bedroom slippers. Of course. As I collect my guest. You know what I mean? I hate having to do that, you know, do the thing and then press the button. It's demoralizing. Just walk up the f- stairs yeah. and I'll open the door with my giant skeleton key. Yeah. Now we're going to play a game called Asshole or Not. And in this game, we're just going to discuss behaviors uh, and figure out if someone's asshole or not. Okay. In the bathroom at work. Asshole behavior or not? Is it a private bathroom? It's a single occupancy, all gender inclusive bathroom with a fairly sturdy lock and soundproofing. If you can quickly and efficiently and there's no residue. What's the time limit? I think. 90 seconds? Damn. <laughs> I think you're capable. Oh, I'm capable. I think but you I need mean, to, if, if, if this is what you're after, it's like you need to go in there ready to go. You got to go in there semi-chubbed. You got to have you know, the, the, the ready and yeah, yeah, it, yeah. headphones. You might have to be imagination-based at that point. You know, when I got out of treatment once, uh, I had in, I in 30 days twice. They didn't allow porn, nothing. I arrived home, I went upstairs, and 
I didn't even have to have a sexual thought or as I was walking up the stairs, the, leak. the erection started to grow to a tumescent nature, like a redwood sequoia. And I, I think even before I started to touch my penis. Wow. That was an overshare. But um, that would be acceptable yeah. given the time that yes. we're talking. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Whole or not, Buffy haters. Not whole. Just, they don't like Buffy. No, I think it's whole to judge people based off of their taste. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I hate it when people say, this is my guilty pleasure, watching Knott's Landing. It's like, no, if no. you like something, that's great. Yeah. It's a horrible, depressing world. And if you like something, just enjoy it. But I do appreciate sometimes people will tell me that they haven't seen Buffy and lead with an apology. I like that. Oh, so you think people should be apologetic about not watching Buffy? I don't think they should be. It's it's it's, it's great if they are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, oh God, whole or not, he makes you listen to a song he wrote about you. Um, I don't know a situation in which I'd be around someone who's writing a song. Can I give you a hypothetical? Okay. So um, that's tough. No, I'm Cardi B, and I wrote this song about you. It goes bonk, 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 beat it up. This, this tight like a nun, bongos. I'm familiar. Um, uh, I think I grin and bear it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you wouldn't, you wouldn't be like. But I don't want to like. You don't want your back I get nervous. Though. I'd be like watering the plant yeah. of like making them think, oh, you like that? I'll do more of it. So I yeah, need yeah. to be like, this is great, but like bookend. Yeah. This is great. I think. My back shots don't sound like bongos, but I appreciate the sentiment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, ooh, uh, being vegan in 2024. Um, you can be vegan. You can't talk about it. Oh, great compromise. Yeah. Pull or not. Podcasts hosted by two men. <laughs> of any sexual orientation? Yeah. It's two men. I'm kind of like pro-men. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So not whole. Not Okay, yeah. yeah. I think they're overplayed and oversaturated, and we need more women's voices. But um, uh, submitting a blind item to De Moi. What the f is De, de Moi? It's a social media account in which it sort of functions as like, you know, people go out, if they were to go out to dinner and they were to see you out at dinner, they would write in and be like, spotted, Katya on Sunset Boulevard. Uh, and sometimes people will take photos. But I'm pro, if you see two celebrities out where you're having dinner, by all means, take the photo and put it in the group chat. Yeah. I think we culturally have a problem right now with understanding who our audience is. And so I think a lot of things that are intended to be within the friend circle, um, because of a need for attention or affirmation, or I can't you know, diagnose it, yeah. but it ends up, we, we put it out there. Yeah. And things that are just meant to be for those who know. Yeah. I mean, it's like, you know, if I see Dua Lipa squatting uh, in the woods taking a shit, I'm going to snap a pic. Yeah. But I'm not going to. Human just, nature. I'll just send it to my mom and yeah. that's it. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, faceless profiles on Grindr. Fine. Fine? Yeah. What? Why? That's one of those things where it's like, is it annoying? Perhaps. Mm -hmm. But it's just like, I guess to me it's more, if you're going to have the headless picture you need to be forthcoming about presenting the head. It doesn't need to, head. yeah, it doesn't. So what well, then maybe the middle ground here is like, don't make me ask for the head. Exactly. You need to throw the head. Throw the head. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so great. So this next uh, segment is very fun. We've got voicemails from callers. They're going to tell us about what they've done. So let's take our first caller. Wow. How do they do it? Hollywood. Yeah. So I had a grand hookup, right? And... I went over to his house. He with me over to his place, and uh, we hooked up. He fell asleep, like, immediately. And he Ubered me in there, so I was like, what the f***? You know, so I was going to wait until he woke up, right? Um, well, I got impatient. I kind of started going through his phone, decided to just leave, and I was going to walk back, right? Um, on my way out, I decided to grab a couple party favorites, and... I left. Okay, so he put his on his and put his to sleep, then went out through his pockets yeah. and left with some of his stuff. That's I mean, like, you can't go through someone's phone. Yeah, no. Not a stranger. No. I think he's definitely an asshole. Definitely an asshole. Definitely but then an I'm asshole. like, he's calling in right now, right? So there's, there's got to be some 
concept in which he's he's wondering, am I or am I not? Yeah. So like obviously it seems like we're saying he is. So but if we were to consider why is he not, it's like everything he's done is pointing towards like You stole from this guy who was asleep. Yeah. You're a thief. Like but objectively bad, right? Yeah, that's an asshole. Okay, you're not. All right, next call. Next call. So I was in this year-long situation. He said I was really important to him, blah blah blah. One morning, I wake up to him reposting an Instagram story from another guy with a heart next to his name. We talk about it. We squash the beef, whatever. It's fine. We head back to his place. We're there for like maybe five minutes and we get a knock at the door. It's the guy from the Instagram story. He's drunk. He's shirtless and he's looking to write some They flip back and forth for like five minutes in front of me while I head to the bathroom and slam all the doors in my wake. Uh, The side leaves. We get into it and he tells me I never saw his boyfriend material after a whole year of dating. So I naturally start out and never talk to him again. So he's in a situation ship. Some third party member shows up at the door, shirtless, drunk, starts and they start flirting in front of this other guy. And then the the situation ship ends up breaking up as a result. But anyway, so the caller, I'm going to call the caller an asshole. Okay. I think that if you have expectations around your partner's behavior in general, then situation ships aren't for you. Because I think the construct of a situation ship is that we aren't defining things. You do you, I do me. Right. Wait, wait, there's a term. DTR, define the relationship. If you haven't DTR'd, all bets are off. It's It's DNR. <laughs> Yeah. I, I don't know about situationship. Uh-huh. I don't love that expression. But don't you think that you've perhaps been in them but just haven't called it that? Oh, wow. I think you're right. I think it's just nomenclature. I think, like, situationships are very... Oh, I love very, that word, nomenclature. I know, it's so though. good. Yeah. Um, I mean, situationship, like, we have a... Uh, We're hanging uh, out. Oh, yeah, I guess, I guess it is I would better. say most gay relationships are situationships. Yeah. Like, I think that's more common... Than the relationship. Yeah. What do you say as an adult over 30 that you're like, I mean, situ- I guess. Well, I guess yeah. I, so I wouldn't, I de- so this is the thing. Okay. I don't think you introduce someone as like, this is my situation I think that's weird. Yeah. That sounds like this is the guy that I experiment on my lab. Yeah. yeah it sounds- it's kind of like what we were saying. <laughs> it's like what we were saying earlier. It's like, you are vegan, but you don't define yourself as vegan. It's yeah. the same idea. It's like, I'm in a situation ship, but I'm not calling it a situation ship. So how do you introduce that person? This is the this guy is I'm Jack. seeing. This is Jack. Yeah. We're, we're, in our, we're just in, embroiled in certain things. <laughs> I think it's like, this is Jack. This is Jack. Hi. Yeah. yeah. Jack. Fair enough. Okay. So next segment asks the question, are we... Mm-hmm. We're going to look at our own behavior right. or your behavior and yeah. let's see um, how you've conducted yourself in the past. Okay. Um, so you're married, but were you always, how long have you been on the grid, the grinder grid? As long as there's been grinder, I feel. Wow. Yeah. I mean, like I can remember like back to college. So yeah, I mean. How old are you now? I'm 35. Great age. So mm-hmm. I feel like I was an early adopter. I remember I like the like, old layout. So before... Finding love on Grinder. What is your best Grinder hookup story that you can remember? My best Grinder hookup story. I feel like my best Grinder hookup story is yet to come because I don't want to put it out there as though like you know what I mean. I thought you were married. <laughs> um, best Grinder hookup story. I mean, I've had I had a I had a situation ship. Oh, here we go. With a guy who worked in he like managed a luxury high rise in the city, mm. and so he invited me to said luxury high rise. Okay. Did you f*** on the cold, bl- like, uh, bare floor of an empty condo? Yeah? <laughs> nice. Um, have you ever had someone show up that looked um, incredibly uh, much more uh, cute and handsome than their photos suggested? Yeah, but I mean, I think more often than not, it's yeah. the other way around. But yeah, that's great. I welcome that. Yeah. Do you do video uh, conference um, verification? I, sometimes it's efficiency for me. So if we're getting on video, it's uh, time is money. Okay, see, I think the opposite because uh-huh, it's like, you want to bet. I don't want to do endless chatting. Talk is cheap. Video. Yeah, but do- you're. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Okay, I could get on board with that. Yeah. I just don't know if like the video becomes suddenly we're chummy and then it's like then are, then it's like situationship territory. What do you think you're going to be like video pen pals for the rest oh, of your so life? Oh, so you're saying you're talking like video like sex, yeah, but it's like, like video sex. You're like you gave me all your stats, your interests. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We had hi, hello, how are you? Okay, let's say. Hey, I just want to touch base to okay. make sure you're you. Yeah, so for efficiency's sake, I would say send me a video in which you do X, Y, Z thing. That way I don't have to be on the other line. I can check it when I'm ready. Could be anybody's video. I, I ask ne- them to do certain things. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. okay. I need make to a hold- video telling me your favorite Julia Roberts movie. Okay, fair enough. Fierce. What if they say Notting Hill, though? Notting Hill? I wouldn't even put that in the top five. No. 
Oh my God. Have you ever dated someone who didn't have social media? No, but I've befriended people that don't. I love it at anybody. Yeah. This is my six four. Yeah. Like oh. if the, if they don't have social media, they immediately go from Steve Buscemi to Henry Cavill. Oh, wow. I love that. Yeah. It's great. Um, who's on your sex playlist? Um, old Lily Allen. Okay. Would definitely be on there. Tiny Tim. Tiny Tim. Um, um, I would say like in general, like just my, my like go-to like 90s stuff. So like the Spice Girls, TLC, Christmas Lauren Hill, Hill, anything Hill. that was like formative. I feel uh, Erica Badu was always like, oh. I have f***ed so many men to that album. Mm. Many, many men. Yeah. I've been f***ed with Eric in the background. But I always find it challenging. Like, do you have a moment? Are you mid hookup and you're like, hold on, hold on. I got to put on some music. Like, Absolutely. how do you navigate? No. You got to. It's gotta, playing from the get-go. I have a three-hour playlist. There's no way we're f***ing with three hours. And it's, it's, it's like tried and true. Do you ever find it? Because it's like, you know. I watch a lot of interviews, especially with like actors, where they talk about like, you know, we're going, we went at it for like, or just the popular belief is like, oh, we went at it forever, Mm -hmm. implies that like we're so into each other Mm -hmm. that we just couldn't stop going at it. Mm -hmm. But it's like, can't great sex happen quickly? Mama, I'm living proof. I will show you three minutes of heavenly pleasure Mm -hmm. that is- But only 90 seconds if it's in the bathroom at work. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So what is your take on- and why do you think they should be outlawed? I'm just kidding. Um, I, uh, I think it's really hard to talk about publicly because I think the it's di- uh, the idea of shaming. But what is, if shaming is my? Let's get into that. Yeah. Um, I am pro you being into whatever you are into. Yeah. Obviously, I think I go like. Also, in this day and age, what even is a? I but I do think people. I do think there's like this effort, and I don't know if it's unique to gay people or what, of like this like one upping. And I think it's found its way into where it's sort of like, I'm into this. And it's like, well, I'm into that, but then I also do this on yeah. top of it. And so sometimes I question the authenticity of people's. Yeah. So I am not shaming, but rather I am sus about the authenticity of. So you wear a doggy mask, you only have sex outside on a Honda Civic in the rain yeah. with your stretcher uh-huh. attached to a generator um you know what yeah. yeah it's like okay great wonderful good yeah. for you yeah i'm gonna just give you uh, a list of celebrities okay. and um i want you to tell me if you think they're an asshole or not through experience or like just my idea just, just i just okay. idea okay. um ruth bader ginsburg not asshole. george washington not asshole. uh helen keller Polish. <laughs> um al pacino not a uh, Mary Stuart Masterson. Can be a little bit of an asshole. Jennifer Aniston. Not an asshole. Jennifer Lawrence. Not an asshole. Jennifer Convertibles. Not an asshole. Great. Okay. <laughs> so thank you so much. But before we end, do you have any upcoming trips by chance? I'm going to be going to Thailand very, very soon. For what purpose? I have some work that I need to do in Thailand. Some... Body modification work? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> well, we're all, um, we'll be uh, waiting with bated breath to see what your post-op <laughs> looks like. <And> just... <laughs> Where can the children find you on the internet? Please tell us. I'm mostly Instagram these days. Okay. Evan Ross Katz. I keep it simple. Well, thank you so much. Always a delight. You look dapper in this sweater. Thank and you. I think Where's you're... it from? It is from... Uh, uh, Henry Zonkovic. Hen- uh, Henry, Henry David, uh, 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 uh.